Before we get into the character panel, a couple important concepts about Illustrator in general. One is if you're working on a multiple page document, Illustrator is not the best program for that. That is where InDesign comes into play. So if it's page after page, like a magazine or a book, then InDesign is going to be your choice. But if it's the cover of the magazine or the cover of the book, because that's a totally different shape than the inside pages, um, then Illustrator is your choice. Posters, uh, small flyers, anything that is typically printed on one page at a time or less than many pages, Illustrator is your choice. Uh, the other thing that I think is important to talk about is the difference between placing and pasting text inside of Illustrator. So I'm just going to scroll down here to, to get a new area to start working in. Grab the artboard tool, draw out an artboard, you know, approximately eight and a half by 11, but I'm not really concerned about its size. And okay, so what I'm going to do to show you the differences is I'm going to go out to just any old website. In fact, I'll just type the word typography and we'll go to say like Wikipedia or something just to grab a bunch of type. And I'm just going to start from here and go down a couple. Okay, so I've gone down the page a little bit, uh, clicking and dragging. I'm going to do a uh, copy, Command C on a Mac, and then we're going to go into Word, and I'm going to open up a new document there, and I'm just going to do a simple edit paste or Command V. If it tells me I need to download a font, I guess we'll do that. Not sure what this is all about. So what I want you to see here is that Word, with just a copy and a paste, tried to keep a lot of what's known as the local formatting, the formatting of that document inside of the web. Uh, didn't do such a good job with the first word. Um, but you can see it kept a lot of the other things and it uh, made this word uh, larger, changed the, the font type. Now, if we go into Illustrator and we take uh, and make area text, so we take the text tool, click and drag out a box, and then do a command V to paste that information in there, you can see there is no local formatting whatsoever and if we select the type uh, it is at illustrator's default typeface and before i explain why that's important let me just show you one more thing to drive the the point home about the difference between area text and type text so if i were to just grab the text tool and click in command v and paste the text in do you see the difference there the only time that the text wraps around in this case is when a hard return is hit so definitely wouldn't be the choice you would want for here um, and another important thing to know about this in a lot of text programs is that you can show the hidden characters like where the returns are and where the spaces are by going up to type and looking for show hidden characters there it is right near the bottom and so here you can see where a hard return is this is the symbol for a hard return so if you hit the return key and i use the word hard return because there is a such thing as a soft return which is used for getting text to kick down to the next line um, but not use the things in the computer or the program that apply to type. And a, a soft return, you hold down the shift key and hit return. And so you can see that it generates a different symbol. Uh, just to drive the point home, I'll go up here and I'll hit return. So there's your hard return, there's your soft return.
and because there are no returns whatsoever in this text for quite a while, that's why when you use point text, it just keeps going and going and going to the right. Now, the reason that the difference between pasting text and placing text is so important is as a graphic designer, you may get text from an author and your job is to put it in a book or a magazine or something similar. And if you just pasted the text in, you're going to lose all their uh, italics and anytime they made something bold and so on. So how do you keep that? Well, that's where placing comes in. So I'm just going to clean this document up by deleting the point text, drag out another artboard. Okay, now we'll pretend that we received some copy is what they typically call it in the business body copy copy um, from our client that's supposed to go in this book that we're working on and i'm going to first just do a copy and we'll go back to illustrator we'll get our cursor in here do a command a to select all and then a command v to paste all that text in now we'll go over to this artboard and we're going to go file place this time and now i'm going to go to the actual uh, file from the client and click place here again and then it asks me what do i want to include so this is something that you'd have to experiment with um, if you were working with a client uh, in this case since we don't have any of this stuff i'm just going to checked all of it but you can see there's an option here to remove the text formatting but in this case we don't want to do that and what we should see here yeah we get the loaded cursor and now if i just put this anywhere in the document and click with it there is our text so the beauty of this is that things like the italic here still remain so once we start formatting this inside the program we have a nice reminder of what the client's intentions were which words were accented and and so on so that we can now design that properly okay i'm going to scroll to the top of my document so i can grab this text that i made earlier this remember is the point text and i'm going to use that to show you around the character panel so notice that um, if we just let's say we had a shape on here as well and we just had that selected that the properties panel shows us things about the shape things that we can do to that shape that's why this property panel is so nice is as soon as we click on something else in this case text it shows us things about the text so i'm going to make this bigger bring it out more prominently here just so you can see all the options and you know that the focus here is on the character panel. So the very top thing that you have in the character panel is which font you're using. So if I bring this down and select a different font, because I have it selected, you can see that it starts to change on the document as well. A nice feature too is I could actually put the cursor inside of here and just click down with my arrow key if I'm looking for just the right font. Now, a quick note on font selection. Be careful. I, my best suggestion to you is stick with the classics, like the ones that you'd find in typographic specimens, the great 28 typefaces. You can Google that. You can find the table of contents on Amazon um, because it's easy to accidentally make yourself look foolish as a beginning designer if you accidentally use fonts like Comic Book Sans, Papyrus, uh, Impact. I'm going to switch over to our area text and show you a little bit of the difference in the way things work here. So as long as I have that whole entire area selected, the font inside the whole entire area will change. But if I'm looking just to change, let's say for example, the first word here, if I get a selection of that first word, then it goes down to or comes down to what is selected as to what will be affected. 
And if we want different cuts of the same font, that's where this next menu comes into play. So if I click italic, for example, changes that. Uh, then the next item, or I should say items, what's nice about them is if you hover the mouse over them, they tell you what they do. So that can be helpful into learning what these little symbols stand for. So I'm going to select the word point over here, just the word point. And we're going to change the type size just for that. And then we have the, our next item on here is the letting, which hands back has to do with the distance between lines of type. So for this, I will select my area type, which actually has multiple lines of type. And we will go ahead and we'll start changing this and see what that looks like. So the higher the number, the greater the distance between the text. So if I set this to 18 points, what the letting really means is that there's 18 points from this baseline, which is the imaginary line that the text rests on, to this baseline. That's what the letting measures, but increasing the letter uh, letting is what gives you this additional white space or errors the text out a bit. Our next item is, let me get this back here is called kerning. And kerning, like the hint says, sets the distance between two characters. So since it's two characters, we don't select the two characters. We just get the cursor in between the two characters and we adjust it. So you could probably tell just visually that the distance between the T and the E is too far. And as a good designer, you need to be watching out for that with any text, especially if it's for something that's important, which almost everything a designer does is important. But if it's, you know, a 300 page textbook, you're not going to be looking at every single character combination throughout the entire textbook. But when you have uh, text on a book cover or a chapter divider in a book or even a subhead, an area that is above a paragraph that's bigger. Um, on a business card, everything is pretty small, but a business card is a precious document. So every little bit of text on there should be adjusted. So for the kerning, you have these options that will kind of get you there in a hurry by picking a preset. Uh, my favorite method is just to swipe my cursor across this area and then focus my attention on the text and then use the up or down arrow keys to get the exact spacing that I'm after. Then we have tracking, which is not nearly as popular or important as kerning uh, because tracking does something that you typically don't want to do and that is compressing the entire word or whatever you have selected actually. So you can see in this case, I need to make a selection. It's not just placing the cursor, um, but when I start changing the tracking, what you'll see here is the entire word starts to get spread apart. And the reason you don't wanna do that is that generally the text is perfect as is, except for maybe the need for a little bit of kerning. But when you do this, you start to destroy that white space that the original type designer had envisioned in that font. So really, there's only a couple times that I can think where tracking out a font makes sense. One is if you're going to have a job, which hopefully you don't get, where they're using cheap paper and the paper's too absorbent and the ink hits it and it spreads out a little bit. So you would do that to increase the legibility. Also, sometimes if you have captions under, for example, an image and the text is very small, it's been shown that increasing the tracking on real small text can actually increase the readability of it. The next two, you never want to do on purpose. Um, in fact, as I showed you in the last video, you really want to keep your eye on these to make sure that you didn't make a mistake because Scaling a font is just about the worst thing that you can do as a designer. So hopefully you've noticed how convenient 
this properties panel is, depending on what you're working at. But it does have its limitations, where if we have to click these three dots every time to show this bigger. So we may want to just grab the official character panel. And remember, all the panels are under Windows. So if we go, in this case, Window Type Character, that's going to bring this out and it contains not only the character panel but by default the property and the open type panel which we'll talk more about later um, so i'm just going to put this off to the side here so it's easier easier for us to see all of our important options and you can see even right now by default we don't see everything but if we go here and we click show options then we get to see it in its full glory okay so the next item that we had to talk about is a baseline shift. So here's an example of your baseline, the imaginary line that text rests on. Here's an example with a baseline shifted. So here's our normal baseline, but the baseline of the ST, uh, which is called the superscript, has been shifted up. Now, normally you can just have the computer do that for you probably seen in programs like Word where it even does it automatically for you as soon as you hit the space bar or go on to the next thing it superscripts this. Um, in this program you can get there one of two ways. On the character panel there's an option here to superscript. Also inside the menu is an option to superscript. Oh, I think I picked the wrong thing. I picked subscript. Let me do that one more time and pick super. And so you can see it does an okay job. The uh, kerning would need to be adjusted and so on. But if you want to do something like that yourself, then this is one of the examples where the baseline shift comes in. So you would just select these words. You would select and change the type size to whatever makes sense for you. And then you would go in with this still selected, just those two letters and you would go to the baseline shift and I'll just swipe my cursor across here and you can see the greater that number becomes the more the baseline gets shifted and then we would go on and kern that make it look pretty this next one I'm not sure where you would ever want to use this but here it is it is a character rotation and you can set the angle of the character rotation the next two here, I'm going to basically tell you, just don't use them. All caps, I'm not even sure if, if all that does is maybe just change it to all caps, but you know, just do that yourself in case it does make a change, because this one I know does make a change, which is small caps. So what this does is it's the computer's best guess at what a small cap should look like with this font. I will show you in an upcoming video that there are very few font sets that contain real all caps, but if, or I'm sorry, small caps, but if you need small caps, you need to find a font that the designer of the font actually built the small caps. Next two here are if you ever need to put an underline under your font or a strike through, you probably make nicer results doing that by yourself with a stroke. Then you have your choice of language. So you have English US, which is a little bit different than um, English uh, British, um, but usually doesn't make a big difference for graphic designers. Uh, then you have your anti-aliasing mode, which really only applies to non-vector graphics. So you shouldn't have to concern yourself about that under normal operations. But if you're doing stuff with a lot of effects, like Photoshop type effects, then you may want to take a look at how that affects your work, but typically sharp is good enough. Then there's some new um, snapping options that have been added, and I wouldn't really concern yourself with learning these right now. They're just uh, there to help someone who does a lot, a lot of aligning against text. So you could align to the cap line, the baseline, different things. And if you know if you want to see more about it, there's a little video built right in here. Um, and you could also go out to like uh, YouTube and see more videos, but um, I, it's just something that's a little bit advanced for quick learning of typography. Oh, and you can also get it right from the horse's mouth, where if you click here, this will take you to Adobe's help. And their help on their websites has gotten a lot better, where it's pretty easy to read and very well 
illustrated and sometimes uh, movies as well.